Hello again, everyone. Um, today, I'm downstairs in our house. I'm <laughs> out of the study at last, and I thought I'd um, show you around some of the books. Oh, there's our Christmas tree, still up in uh, February. It's not that unusual. It's been up for about two and a half years. It was when um, we were still locked in during COVID, during the Omicron era. And uh, I, we just refused to take down Christmas tree. We refused to believe that uh, Christmas would ever end. <laughs> it was that kind of mood. And, uh, and here's Bernard Socks. Hello, Socks. He's come to say hello briefly. He's off again. Anyway, this is where we have a bookcase downstairs. And it's a funny old bookcase because it's a gathering of all kinds of things that don't fit together. There's lots of knickknacks there as well on show. It's a kind of slightly eccentric bookcase. But because it's got deep shelves, it's got lots of um, picture books and uh, art books there too. So it's kind of overflow, that's what I'd call it. Um, here's the, the top shelf with um, uh, Romana and some gonks and a painted uh, Christmas canvas from our friend Siobhan from a couple of Christmases ago and a Santa Claus which Jeremy had as a kid which I think he might have made, I'm not sure. And the books behind are kind of intriguing, to me anyway. They're things like Watership Down and Narnia and Howard Spring and E.B. White. And down here, more knickknacks. A view, movie viewer from when I was a kid that showed Disney reels. I got this one in, on eBay. I haven't got my own from back then. I loved these. It meant you could watch cartoon shorts extremely slowly, frame by frame, which at the age of five, I just thought was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. This is a creature from Space 1999, made for me by uh, my friend Steve Predo. He sent me this amazing thing. It's from the best ever episode of Space 1999, Bringers of Wonder. Still the best episode ever. Uh, Peanuts, Scream Street books by my friend Tommy Donbevand, who died a few years ago. He wrote the most wonderful kids' books about um, kids who are monsters who all live on the same street. They were chapter books, a bit like Goosebumps, but funnier. And they became a TV show. Tommy was fantastic, a very um, supportive and sweet fella. Tigana, which was a fantasy novel I read after my finals at university, like a slightly camper, Lord of the Rings. Bad Blood, Lorna Sage's memoir, which came out the year before she died. <clears throat> she was our great friend at UEA. And when this came out, we read together on campus at UEA. <laughs> that was a good night. There was a stampede for table for a table in a restaurant afterwards in Norwich. And she had lots of uh, followers on. And they stampeded so fiercely that I was trampled underfoot. And so was Jeremy. And we couldn't get a seat at our own table uh, after a reading. So we <laughs> went to the restaurant next door. Lorna um, was amusing about it afterwards. <clears throat> she always had a gang of um, loyal harpies. Um, she always saw the funny side of things. What else? <laughs> One of Jeremy's toys from when he was a kid. I'm not sure what it is, but it's wearing spangly purple dungarees, or at least they used to be many years ago. More books, more creatures, a spinning top, a uh, beautiful vase. It's like being on the generation game, isn't it? There's Teddy from um, The Panda, the Cat and the Dreadful Teddy. The top volumes of The Golden Girls. 
And here's some picture books, Giles cartoons. And this book, wow, the Encyclopedia of Science Fiction. I had when I was quite young, about seven, when Star Wars was all the rage. And um, it's all I could think about was Star Wars and science fiction when I was seven. And this came out, this very lavishly illustrated book with very, very peculiar vintage artwork. And I was a bit obsessed with it. Science fiction was so peculiar and much weirder than it was on uh, in the films. And this is how I learned that. Very exciting. The text, I don't think... <laughs> I ever did more than dip into. It was the pictures that obsessed me as a kid. Slightly um, spooky, sometimes rude. <laughs> so, an early Wookiee there. Um, yeah, here's... Oh, again, pictures seared on my brain. Uh, oops. Funny the, the the way that everything is so present now, that you know the Star Wars films are so easy to to come by on streaming services. These things were fewer and far between them, and merchandise and books and things were much harder to come by. These shelves are looking a bit dusty down here. Um, the Defenders comic, Victor Bokris's book about Andy Warhol, which is one of the best. And more picture books and comics. Down here, Edgar Allan Poe and Shirley Bassey, shoulder to shoulder, at last. Well, there's a combination. Mick Rock's photos of Ziggy Stardust, Calvin and Hobbes and Spider-Man, Venice, Whoopi comic. <laughs> it's such a cliche to talk about your eclectic shelves. But, oh, that's Sarah Jane Smith and the Space Lesbian Fairy of Torchwood. <clears throat> Poor Torchwood. Um, oh, the Bus by Daniel Meadows, which is the most fantastic book of photos. Can I grab that? Will everything fall down if I do? This must be more than 20 years ago this came out. And it describes a photography project in which this fella went round the country in a bus and took photos of people for free. And then 20, 25 years later, he went back and tried to find the people and take their photos again. It's very moving, a very beautiful book. Real social history. I should look at that again. OK. Before I start grabbing everything off the shelves, I can see Roland Barthes' pleasure of the text. I was obsessed with Roland Barthes and his criticism at one point. <clears throat> yes, all that kind of literary theory doesn't mean so much to me nowadays. Maybe I've had too much literary practice. <laughs> so, Romana and the Cardboard Santa and the pink poodle, and the robot, and that leopard thing, and the gonk, and that rather dirty looking lamb from eBay. We'll all say goodbye now. <laughs> okay, talk again soon. Bye bye.